Hey everyone, this is Holly Chantal, the president of The Land of Brand, and you are attending the laboratory, which is The Land of Brand Laboratory, and today we're going with Facebook Live because I'm not at my desk because it's gorgeous out and I'm outside. It's days like this that make me remember why I moved to New Hampshire, because um, it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so. If you've never joined us for the laboratory before, we meet every second and fourth Wednesday of the month, and we talk about different experiments in your brand. Because I believe that you cannot grow your business unless you are willing to experiment, try new things, reflect on what works, fix what doesn't, and keep moving forward. So today we're going to be talking about, or answering the question, does your website or your brand come first? And I feel like this is very much like the chicken and egg conundrum, you know, the um, which came first, the chicken or the egg. The chicken is hatched from an egg, so you would think the egg comes first, but in order to get an egg, you need a chicken to lay one. So which one, which one comes first? It's like this never ending cycle. Um, and it kind of gives me a headache to even think about. Your website is very similar. And I often run into coaches that are, are having this dilemma, wondering, oh, oops, I just clicked on something. Just trying to see who's logging in. For some reason, I never, never am able to see until after the fact. Um, so, uh, I lost my train of that back up. Um, so oftentimes the coaches have this dilemma of whether or not they should be working on their brand. They say, um, you know, I'm going to get my website together and when I start getting clients, then I'll start working on my brand. Or what if it's too early to work on my brand and I don't get it right? Um, so it becomes this, this question that holds them back because they believe that in order to have, uh, in order to figure out what their brand is, they need a website and vice versa. In order to do a website, you need a brand. So if we back up and we look at what your website is supposed to do, which is clearly communicate who you serve, clearly communicate what it is you do and why they should hire you, display your offerings and how they fit together and, you know, what the process is to purchase from you and your website is the first oftentimes the first and sometimes the last perception or impression that people have of you then that's where thing then you would then answer me this if you don't know the answers to those questions how are you going to create a website that's really going to convert and work for you? And the answers to all of those questions lie within your brand. So that means that your brand comes first, always. Your brand always comes first. Whether you are writing copy, whether you are creating a marketing campaign, and of course it's starting to rain and I'm outside with my cell phone. Awesome. Try to finish this up quickly. Um, so, <laughs> now there's a plane going. Oh gosh, don't rain on my phone. <laughs> Good thing these things are uh, um, waterproof, right? All right, I'm gonna close my laptop because I don't want that to get rained on. Anyway, so your brand always comes first. You have to figure out the answer, the answers to these questions, in order for anything that you're doing in your business to actually be effective. But that said. Depending on where you are in your business, that's going to look a little bit different. So, for example, if you are just starting out and you're not making bank right now, then investing in a expensive logo, color scheme, font scheme, and then you know bringing that across your website and all of your marketing materials and everything is probably not where your money needs to be spent because all of those things are superficial and don't really get people to buy from you. On the other hand, no matter where you are in your business, if you are not crystal clear and can say in one sentence 
what it is you do for your clients and you understand without a doubt who your ideal client is, then you need to get help. So a couple ways to know whether or not you know if you know what your ideal client is or, or what it, how to communicate what you're offering is um, if you're calling your, your ideal client your target audience, then you probably need help. Because the target audience is a broad scope of people. And large corporations have target audiences. They are, are looking to appeal to a vast number of people. In our business, we only need to appeal to a certain slice of that market. And when we can focus on one type of client at a time, that is when you're gonna be the most effective. That's when you're memorable, that's when you can stand out, that's when you can really do your best work. And when you're doing your best work, that's when people are talking about you and that's how you're going to create the business that you want to create. So you need to know who your ideal client is, be able to communicate to them, know exactly how to speak their language, how to let them know that you understand them deeply. That's a big piece of your brand. Then the other side was how to communicate what it is you do. So if there are multiple commas in your into what statement um, if you're saying and and so I work people with people that need this and I do this and this and this and this or I work with people that need this or they might be doing this or they might need this if you have more than one or or in one more than one and you're not clear and the more confusing you are the more sales you are losing so what happens when you create a website so some of you know this, but I wasn't always in branding. The land of brand is five years old, but I've been in business for eight years. When I got started, I was just doing website design. I had a business partner that did the graphics. I did the uh, development and the programming. And, um, and I was working with clients on, you know, kind of directing, doing the project management piece. What I found and I, I've always worked with coaches, what I have found is that when they came, when coaches come to you for a website, they don't really know what to ask for. So your website forces you to make very important decisions about your business because your designer is asking you for direction, both, both creatively, like what colors do you want, what kind of images do you want, but they're also gonna ask you for your content for what kind of features or widgets you need, like your opt-in offer and um, what you're gonna have in the sidebar and all of the technical aspects that go into your marketing that you're gonna be doing with your website. Most coaches don't know the answers to those questions. And you know, to write copy for your website can take months if you don't know the answers to those questions, if you don't really know who your target, or sorry, who your ideal client is that you're speaking to if you don't really know how to articulate your your offerings because we're so used to talking to people in person and networking events or when we're speaking or whatnot where we can adapt our message based on who we're talking to on your website you can't do that on your website it's a static message that people land on and either it resonates with them and they continue or it does not resonate with them and they move on. And this happens in like a half a second. So what I found was that our website's projects were taking a minimum of six months and could go on for a year, sometimes a year and a half, believe it or not. So I had clients coming back to me a year and a half after we had started the project because they had finally figured it out. They finally figured out what they wanted to do and we would need to finish the site based on our, you know, our prices from a year and a half ago. Needless to say, that was kind of tough. So I started working with my clients on figuring out the answers to these questions based on the experience I had of building over a hundred websites for coaches at that, at that point we'd been up to hundred. Now we're almost up to 200. So, I had a lot of experience in creating websites. I had a lot of experience in what was working, what wasn't working. I had done a lot of research. So I started working with my clients on mapping out their brand before we did the website. And here's the thing. I added four weeks 
of brand consulting to the front of all of our website packages. And people were really hesitant about this because when you want a website, you want it done yesterday. And I'm telling you, we're gonna spend four weeks planning before we even touch the design. By adding that four weeks on the front end, we shortened our project, our website timelines from minimum of six months to usually a year down to a maximum of three months. That means that was four weeks of planning and eight weeks of writing content because I also would write my content, write the content with my clients at this point. So we'd write the content and do the design in eight weeks. This was awesome. <laughs> People were getting better results. The projects were happening faster and the result at the end of the project was so much more. They weren't finishing the website and then feeling like they had to redo it again a couple months later or immediately. Have you ever had done a website, like create a website with someone um, for yourself? So you, you finish your website project. You're like, woohoo, finally this is done. Because website projects are really uh, time consuming and draining. And it's all done and you don't even want to push the live button because you know that so much has changed since you started this project or you still feel like it just doesn't capture what it is you do and, and how amazing you are, that's because you didn't have the brand first. So that's how we got into doing branding and now that's all I do. Now that four weeks of brand coaching is my most popular offer. It's the thing I do the most of. Um, and I'm, we've gotten, I've gotten so much faster and we do so much more now in those four weeks than I used to. Um, so now, you know, in four weeks, you can have your ideal client. You can have exactly what all your offerings are, how to describe them, how they fit together, how to present them on your website. You know exactly how to describe what it is you do clearly and concisely. And you know what it is that makes you amazing and why people need to work with you. And when you have that, then you can create a website either yourself, if you don't have the budget to spend, you know, thousands of dollars on a website, you can still do it yourself and have much better results because all of the messaging is there. That's really the important part. And any, a, any coach, that you're seeing has having a lot of success, ask them, was the design more important or was the messaging more important? It is always the messaging. The strategy will trump pretty every single time. So if you're not sure if you should be working on your brand or your website, you need to focus on your brand first. The website will become so much easier. It will be so much more effective and you're going to be much happier with the end result. So that will conclude today. We're answering that question of the chicken or the egg website or your brand in two weeks on April 26th. That's the fourth Wednesday of April. We're going to have our next laboratory. It's actually our 150th episode. I've been doing the laboratory, the laboratory for five years now. I used to do it every week. Now I do it every other week. Um, so five years of these webinars and um, it's 150th episode and we're going to be talking about how waffles are screwing with your brand authority. Um, you think waffles are tasty, they go great with ice cream, but they could be sabotaging your business. Um, so we're going to be talking about that and um, I'm putting together my topics for uh, May, June, and July. Um, actually, I already have, actually, no, I already have May figured out. June and July, I'm still working on. If you have topics that you would like to see in the next couple of months that would help you move forward with your coaching brand, then email me, holly at the land of brand com. I'd love to get them on the calendar because I want to make sure that these webinars are serving you. And I love answering questions. Um, that's, you know, where the, the um, bulk of my content comes from is answering your questions. 
So, um, Holly at thelandofbrand.com if you want to send me a topic or if you want to learn more about how I can help you with your brand, um, feel free to shoot me an email there as well. And so thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in two weeks. Bye everyone.